Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me this morning. Maybe it's afternoon for you, but it's morning for me on a Saturday. So I'm skipping out on some yard work. <laughs> After this is over, I'm going to have to go help pitch in. Good morning, Heather and Trish, Ashley, Stephanie. It's so good to see all of you here, Lauren and Allison and Vivian. And thank you all for the participation even before we began on what is rest. I think that we're all kind of on the same page is what it sounds like because this, this, is, this is what I was thinking. So I'm glad to see that we are not alone, right? <laughs> it's easy to think that when we're at home um, just doing our thing that's like, I must be the only one that struggles with this, but you're not. Uh, this is life, and um, it's part of our sanctification, and you're not alone. We all have these struggles. This is just the struggle of being human <laughs> and of trying to live out, you know, God's will for us cheerfully and gracefully and re repent repentfully. <laughs> what, what, what's the, the adverb form of repentance? <laughs> So, yes, good to see you and Lisa and Sarah, Courtney, yay, okay. So, this is <laughs> repentively, <laughs> gonna have to look that up. There's probably not an adverb version, but there should be. <laughs> so, this is not just a session of me talking and you listening, although it's okay if that's what works for you. If you are folding laundry or washing dishes or some other project and just listening, that's okay. Go for it. But you're going to get a lot more out of this if you follow along with pen and paper. So even if you are folding laundry, doing something, you know, grab a notebook, grab a pen, um, repentantly. That sounds likely. Maybe. <laughs> okay. I, I'm not going to look it up on air right now and take a break, but I really want to. <laughs> Wait, I know that. <laughs> so grab paper, grab a pen or pencil and work through this exercise with me. Um, there aren't there are going to be questions along the way, and I don't have a download for this, at least not yet. Maybe I will after this is over. All right, or open Evernote or Google Keep or whatever. Typing sometimes is easier, but this is going to be brain dumping. So as we talk through these things, use the ideas, uh, the conversation, not just what I'm saying, but also the chat box for prompts, for figuring out what's going on in your life, what are your biggest needs right now, what are your biggest obstacles, and um, as we put things onto paper, it helps us uh, collect ourselves, collect our thoughts, and um, achieve more calm rather than letting all the thoughts jumble up in our heads. That's kind of, that's distracting and when we're trying to hold all the things in our heads, we can't use our heads to think things through, to think things out, and to come up with creative solutions, to have just the mental space to problem solve. When we put the details and our thoughts and our connections and our troubles, you know, all those things that pop into our head, instead of letting them just keep popping in our head, if we put them down onto paper, it helps us think about them instead of just the thoughts popping up. We can think about them and start to figure things out. So even if it's unrelated, when a thought pops into your head, as we talk through this and as you take notes and as you brain dump, it doesn't matter if it's a rabbit trail, write it down. If, even if it's a remember like, oh, I need to buy milk, like, write that down. Because distraction really drains us. And that's one of the things we'll be talking about. And when we can just collect those random thoughts that pop in, it helps us remain calm and clear. 
and not worry about forgetting the needful things, <laughs> even if it's like, I need to buy milk at the grocery store. It's amazing how much those little thoughts can collect and build and really clutter up our heads. So, um, <laughs> And I love seeing the chat box too. So you guys are awesome. Um, so share as you do. And I know a lot of you that are here have done lots of brain dumps <laughs> with me. So share some of your takeaways or some of the insights that you have had along the way too, because that's going to help everyone else who's here. And uh, it's going to help you also remember and act on it later because it's narration right? It's good for moms too. And um, I really hope that you get a lot of actionable ideas out of this, not necessarily because it's advice from me, but because through the process of thinking about the different categories and really kind of doing some self-examination and some life examination, you can figure out a change that works for you and your life and your needs right now, because um, it's going to be different for each person, what you need to focus on and what you need to do. There's not a one right way. There's not a one size fits all solution at all. So we have to be able to uh, take responsibility for our, our own selves and our own lives and prayerfully and repentantly, <laughs> I think that's right. <laughs> move forward from where we are to the next step that, you know, is part of our sanctification. So, um, okay. I have three different kinds of rest that we need. And, um, and then three things that we need rest from. So we're going to start with the different kinds of rests that we need. Cause I think that sometimes, you know, we're so jumbled and we're so distracted and we're so tired and fatigued that it feels like any rest is the right rest or a good rest. <laughs> and we do need rest and some of it is good. Um, but we need to figure out the kind of rest that we are lacking. And maybe it will be all three kinds, but they are different types of rest. So we have to build in these three different types of rest to our lives. And one kind, they'll build on each other and they'll help each other out, but they are different aspects of our lives that we do need to take and we can take them intentionally without guilt uh, because these are clearly good things. Rest is a good thing. And these kinds of rests that we need to build into our lives are clearly in and of themselves good things. So if you feel currently guilty for resting because you have so much to do, be thinking along the way about how these are good, perhaps even equally good as your to-do list. And some of them might be more important than some of the things on your to-do list, because maybe your to-do list is full of uh, guilt motivation or you know, things that don't really need to be on there. A lot of our to-do list is just service to others and we do need to, to step up to our duty and rest is not opposed to doing our duty. So start off by um, listing the things that you currently do for rest. What do you currently do when you feel like you need a break? And then, um, I don't know if you want to star some or X others, use some kind of symbol or color or word, just write. Of those things that you do for rest, which ones do you feel rested after doing? Because not everything that we do to take a break helps us feel better afterwards, right? So... If, it, if we don't feel better afterwards, if we don't feel rested and restored after doing it, it's not a break. 
Maybe it's stopping doing our work, but it's not rest. So we have to be examining what we're doing and whether or not it's what we should be doing. And perhaps there's guilt involved because what we're doing for rest isn't restful, so it doesn't help. So our anxiety and our stress is actually building instead of releasing and we feel worse. It, it just kind of builds and is a mess. So we're gonna be taking a step back and examining uh, what we're doing, how we feel when we do it, and um, let's talk about the goal of rest. Um, okay, so Erica says, everything I do to rest, I feel restful during it, but I feel guilty afterwards. So, um, right, scrolling social media is not restful. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And that's the real, uh, the, everyone, Re can reading a book count as rest? Definitely. It, it definitely can. And, you know, there are going to be times where maybe after reading a book, you do feel rested. And maybe after reading a book, you don't. It can, it can depend on the situation and what else is going on or the kind of book or there, there are multiple things going on pretty much all the time. So that's why we have to brain dump and really start following those connections and like, well, what's the difference between this time where I felt rested after reading a book or maybe even after watching a TV show and this time where it wasn't? Um, right. Sometimes you're even too tired to read. So we need to figure out the kind of rest that we need, the kind of tired that we are and so that we know what to build more of into our life. So what's the goal for resting? If we step back and look at the end, keep the end in mind, that will help us um, not feel guilty when we are legitimately resting. And it will help us recognize true rest from fake rest. So the goal for resting is to be rested, right? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't super deep. <laughs> um, so the af the goal of resting is peace and restoration, refreshment. Um, if we go into rest as leisure and scole, um, Peeper's book, Leisure, the Basis of Culture, takes us on a journey on exploring leisure and its purpose, and it goes toward worship. And I think that is a good insight for us as we think about rest. Um, of course, the Bible talks about rest as connected to the Sabbath a lot. And the point of the Sabbath is worship. When we have a, a mind and a soul at peace, we can be grateful we can be attentive. I mean, mindful kind of now has a lot of vague spirituality or, you know, other kind of, it's a fine word, but sometimes it's used by a direction we don't want to go necessarily, but attentive even to God and attentive to what he is doing in our life right now, instead of maybe what we are trying to do in our life we can be more open and receptive when our minds and our souls and our bodies are at peace. But when our, our bodies are tired and fatigued, when our mind is distracted, and when we haven't been spending any time in God's word, with God's people, worshiping, then, in, then these are all blocks, blockage, obstacles to Finding rest, which is from God, real rest is from God, even if it comes after a novel, like it's a blessing that we uh, can have and that is good for us because, I mean, God rested on the seventh day, not because he needed a break, but because that is the end of work. That's enjoying the work. That's what he did. So he didn't... Um, 
you know, the, you know, a lot of the things that we did, he didn't go find entertainment or anything. He was taking enjoyment from his work. And that was how he rested. He wasn't doing work, but he was enjoying the fruits of his work. And that was, that was rest. Also in the new, and so that's why then there's the Sabbath. It follows this model. Um, God was modeling a pattern that he wanted us to follow work and then enjoy the work, enjoy the fruits of the work. It's okay and good and right to not be go, 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 work, 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 productive mode all the time. That is not God's will for us. It is God's will for us to do our duty. And part of our duty is to take a step back and be grateful and worshipful and enjoy the fruits of our work. That's legitimate. And then we see in the New Testament and that Jesus fulfilling the law and um, Jesus being the work for us, right? And the shift to the Lord's day, to, to the day of worship being the first day of the week instead of at the end of the week. Now it comes at the beginning of the week. And the, the symbolism in that of Jesus being our rest. So our rest, our ultimate rest, our spiritual rest, our inner peace is not coming as a result of the works that we are doing. And that includes dishes and laundry and all the little things that we are doing all the time. We don't earn our rest from all those activities. We do all that work as a grateful response of service to God. And we don't have to do enough to earn a rest afterwards. We start in Jesus. We start with and gratitude, knowing that he has done the work. He's paid it all. He, we find our fulfillment in him. And so from that rested state, then we work. And that work then is done in gratitude and not in stress. And it's done um, being attentive to what God is working out providentially in our lives, which is often very different from our own plans. And because we aren't um, consumed with doing enough, then um, we can be free to roll with the punches, like we say in Work the Plan. Um, we, it's not us grabbing control and grabbing what we think we need um, but it's doing the thing that God has placed in front of us to do. And sometimes he places in front of us the opportunities for rest and we should take those also. So, um, that was actually a bigger tangent than I was <laughs> thinking, but it's so true. And that is foundational to, uh, resting. Um, it's not. I think that a lot of the guilt comes from believing that we have to do enough to earn the rest. And that's not true. The guilt, though, sometimes is from the kind of rest that we're taking. Like we're looking for rest in all the wrong places. So um, maybe start... You know, probably not start, but continue in your brain dump on the places that you look for rest. And um, let's start the kind of rest. So I have three kinds of rest. And I'm going to switch up the order here. We're going to start with physical and then do spiritual and then do mental. Those are the three kinds of rest that we should be finding in our days. And we can find in our days. It's these things um, aren't that hard. It's um, <laughs> it's just it, they aren't complex or complicated. They're hard to, to do, <laughs> like most things, right? They they aren't the easy path. And sometimes we think that rest should equal ease, 
And that is not the case, actually. We, we want the path of least resistance, but that's where we get rest that's not restful. Uh, rest is deliberate and intentional and takes work to do. And it's a work of a different kind. And so um, some of our problem with rest is equating it with ease. And that um, will wind up doing more harm than good in the long run. So physical rest. Let's start with that. Um, of course, we need sleep. And so sometimes a lot of our fatigue or discontent or, you know, laziness is actually tiredness, sleepiness. Um, and there are seasons in life where that's just the case. <laughs> we are called to a sleep deprived state sometimes. Um we we are supposed to do our duty and we are supposed to look for rest and take rest. But sometimes the duty that's put before us precludes the sleep that our bodies need. So those are times of real dependence and reliance on God. And sometimes he gives that to us so that we can realize that we were trying to do it on our own and we can't. <laughs> I have, I've had two babies that just didn't, were not sleepers, um, you know, waking up every two hours round the clock for, for nearly a year. And so it's, so I know that it's really frustrating when people say, so sleep enough hours at night. And they're like, I can't. <laughs> Sometimes you can't. If you can, do that there are other seasons of life where we're staying up too late because we're looking for that rest that we think we, the ease, the distraction, um, the distraction kind of rest, the entertainment kind of rest, or, you know, we want peace in our days. And sometimes the only peace is that is there is after everyone else is in bed. And so we want to enjoy it. And some of that's legitimate, but you know, we have to examine and ask the Lord to show us how we're doing, what we're doing wrong, and say, am I stealing sleep from myself when I shouldn't be? So there are different times in life. Uh, it, it took quite a while for me after I had everyone sleeping through the night to realize that I had patterns still that were from the sleep deprived state, that now it was time to like grow out of those. There, there were the survival mode and survival strategies that I didn't really need anymore, but now they were just the norm and I needed to like actually go to bed at a reasonable hour. And I could say, um, you know, because no one's interrupting my sleep, I have a responsibility to take, you know, to use the hours that should be, I should be sleeping and sleep. Um, right. Like putting a book down and you should go to sleep. But sometimes I'm just not allowed to read novel. I don't allow myself to read novels because, or like, I can't read a good book that I've never read before, before bed. I just can't because I will stay up too late. So, you know, thinking through those things and like, what are my weak points? How can I address those and make it work? But then if you're going through a sleep deprived state where there isn't a way out of that, then you have to really rely on the spiritual rest and the mental rest, which we will talk about later. But also just know that it's a real thing. Not getting enough sleep will affect your memory, will affect your ability to think in a straight line. <laughs> It will affect how much you can do. And so don't put standards on yourself of expecting yourself to perform at the same level that you do when you have enough sleep as you can now when you're sleep deprived. Like you need to give yourself different um, standards for the different seasons of life. So Think about your sleep patterns and, you know, what you need to be doing or what you can do about that first 
because we need affects everything. It affects our resilience, our ability to handle people not doing what we want them to do, <laughs> which moms need to be able to do that, right? So uh, what, what can we do? And if anyone has things that you have done that have helped, share those in the comments because this is um, this is just com the common law of moms, right? We go through these different times in life where different things are needed and um, we can help each other out. Another um, way to get, sometimes we need physical rest and uh, it's actually, we can actually take a nap. If, you know, if, so um, I did this off and on and enough to know that it was really the thing I should be doing. Um, but I had a timer on my alarm for three days a week. It went off at 1230. So I should have had lunch by then to, and it said, take a half hour power nap. And it wasn't so much for the sleep as for the break and the rest because I did it on days where I was teaching a class. So I, I homeschooled my kids. And then on three days a week, different kids come to our house and we do group lessons. And, and I love it. And it really helps us stay on track. And, and it's awesome in all kinds of ways. But I then usually can't do anything <laughs> for several hours after that. I'm just like, okay, I am totally zoned out, done. And it doesn't, I don't feel necessarily physically tired, like I need to go to sleep. I just feel mentally disengaged and done. Like the only thing I can do is zone out now, maybe read a book, but mostly just scroll Instagram. <laughs> and I know we can all relate to that probably, especially introverts. So this is the, the introvert has had enough and then you just feel flat and done. What do you do? And some of that is mental rest, but um, it's physical too. And um, I'm not really a napper. And I usually, if I take a nap, I usually wake up and I feel worse. So I didn't really think <laughs> this was going to work for me. Um, but I set an alarm. And most of the time, I did not fall asleep but I had 20 minutes of basically sensory deprivation, <laughs> what it was. <laughs> and uh, that was exactly what I needed to re-enter the day because the cause of my need to zone out was basically an introvert wall that I was hitting, right? And taking a step back, closing the door in my bedroom, Every, everyone else, they had something to do and they knew this is only going to be half an hour. Mom will be back down in a bit. You have to actually follow through and do that or anyway, you know, and, and my kids are older. I don't have toddlers anymore. Tod if anyway, you know, there are different adjustments that have to be made, but I would lay on the bed, lights off, door closed. Uh, I should have had earplugs. That would, that would probably have been even better, but I would drape a black shirt over my eyes. And I think that was actually key. And it was just a few moments of no one's talking to me. I'm not even really thinking about anything. And after that, I could re-enter the day going again. I could start going. And so sometimes we have to experiment Maybe, the, you know, try that out, but I'm not saying that's a one size fits all solution. I'm saying even before I tried that, I was telling, well, I'm not a napper. I will wake up feeling worse. I had all these things like that's not going to work for me. Okay, fine. I'll try it. And I found a way where it did solve the problem that I had. And again, the goal is reentering life rested and restored. And that's what it did. Um, so now that I know that that fixes it, I need I have the responsibility to like do it, which I've stopped that habit. <laughs> and so anyway, um, 
try things out and experiment. Don't feel like you have to commit to something, to doing something. Um, have a mindset and a mentality of experimentation. We call this iteration in simplified organization and work the plan where you try something out and then troubleshoot from there instead of like stepping back from, you need to start by stepping back from the problem, but instead of staying there, examining the issue until you feel like you have the best solution to implement, you try something and then you see what happens and you learn about yourself and your situation by trying something and not waiting for the perfect solution to try something. So um, that is was one way that I found to take an intentional break. And I do notice that when I don't do that, I am much more likely to walk into my room and just, you know, plaster myself on the bed or on my chair and pick up the phone and scroll through Instagram or check my email again for no reason. <laughs> um, so at those moments where you're taking those kind of brain dead breaks, like try some kind of sensory deprivation <laughs> for maybe even five minutes. And sometimes even bathroom breaks work for this, right? <sighs> like it's a small little closet. <laughs> like try turning off the light for two minutes and just sitting there breathing. That can be surprisingly helpful. Um, and, and you can do that, you know, even if you have little kids for just, you know, a few minutes. Um, and then um, the other physical rest um, idea, troubleshooting solution that you might try is drinking more water. Um, I am always surprised how much that affects my mental state and my energy state. Uh, if you feel tired or hungry, uh, those like start with a glass of water. It's easy. It's right there. And sometimes that's like what our body needs to, to flush things out and restore in you know, just sometimes we don't need more coffee. We need more water. So uh, and then you get to use the bathroom more often, right? <laughs> so it's a, like win-win. <laughs> so um, just try try water as a break. And sometimes even just taking them as intentional, like doing it on purpose also helps. And we'll get to why that is with the mental rest thing. But don't just make it haphazard, but make it a deliberate choice. And we think that that's like effort. And what we want is non-effort, but restorative effort is restorative. And uh, so it is it is rest. Um, so, and oh, I should, that was a, a big long tangent on, not really a tangent, but the introvert restoration. If you're an extrovert, uh, I think that a lot of times the advice is all about being around people. And that is... Um, that does help. Like you, you like being around people and that sort of thing, but it doesn't have to be uh, talking to a friend or going to a party. You, you Extroverts don't have to go to parties to be restored. Uh, extroverts want to express. So it's, con so the introvert after, you know, having a lot of expression and outward stuff going on needs the stimulation break like so dark quiet like just nothing no sensory the extrovert on the other hand needs a way to express so that can be uh, a musical instrument that can be singing that can be maybe walking and observing what's going on around you um it may be paging through an art book, uh, uh, but especially, so kind of soaking in some kind of peaceful outside of you stimulation. Um, but that's order, 
you know, so like music, art, where it's not random stuff coming at you, not distraction, but it's intentional, single minded, um, something that can really engage your attention or that you are creating. So sewing, music, an instrument, singing, trying to think, um, but doing something with your body or your voice or, you know, that sort of thing where you're creating or expressing, it doesn't have to be with other people. Uh, and that's kind of a misconception, just like a misconception about introverts is that they're antisocial, <laughs> a misconception about extroverts is that they have to be with other people. Um, that's not true. So there are some ideas. And if you have some, um, share them, please. Uh, okay, so that was physical rest. <laughs> I hope they won't all take this long, but they might. Uh, second, we're going to talk about spiritual rest. So, and I, I loved seeing this in the comments that were here before we got started. Um, most of the people who left comments there had already zeroed in that this was the real need. And it's true. And we talked about it a little bit already before, right? So when we need rest, we need peace and calm. And, um, you know, joy, these things that are fruits of the spirit, right? Self-control actually we get rest when we are exercising self-control in certain ways. And anyway, for, it's a fruit of the spirit. And um, Christ has promised us rest, right? In, in many different places, but, you know, come to me all who are weary and I will give you rest. So we, we know that, but we aren't exactly sure how, to apply that or find it. And um, in your brain dump, you maybe write down some of the, the problems you've had trying to apply that verse or uh, in trying to seek spiritual rest and you didn't actually feel rested afterwards. Sometimes we feel like, um, you know, if, if a Bible reading plan or a prayer time is on our checklist, then it doesn't count as rest because I'm accomplishing something. And so then we either don't count it as rest and how we categorize things and what we call them in our minds is a big part of whether or not we derive rest from them. Um, but uh, if if it's on our checklist, we will either discount it and not count it as rest, or we will not have it on our checklist because we don't want it to be a to-do item that we just check the box on, and then we're just really hit or miss on whether or not <laughs> we read our Bible and pray and that sort of thing. And so it's like, if it's on our checklist, we're guilt we feel guilty. <laughs> and if it's not on our checklist, it doesn't happen. And so we feel guilty. Um, so go ahead and put it on your checklist. If, uh, Pam has a great post up, Pam Barnhill. Uh, I don't think it's the top post anymore, but she has a post this week called uh, something for the checklist mom. Um, I should have pulled up that link. If someone has the link, you could put it in there. Um, it's so good. <laughs> We don't have to feel guilty for putting these things on our checklist because we're committing to them and we are wanting to do them. If you are a checklist person, like run with that, use it. It's not, it doesn't make it inferior at all there. Thank you. Um, so go ahead and put it on your checklist, but also a lot of times we, uh, you know, we get these ideas from all kinds of places, but we have this idea in our head of what morning devotions are supposed to look like. And when that doesn't happen, we, again, we don't count it or we don't do it because it's not what we wanted. It's not what we thought it should be. And that's just perfectionism. 
And that's looking for it to be our way before it's good. And that's not, that's not good. Uh, we need to take the opportunities that are in front of us. And sometimes that means that it happens with kids in the same room. Sometimes it means it's interrupted. Sometimes it's not alone, even though we would like it to be alone. Sometimes it means doing um, the book, the Bible on audio and praying while walking, uh, using some other time, maybe while laundry folding, you know, finding some other time where it's maybe not this peaceful, quiet, beautiful moment with candles and coffee. Uh, it's It might not be Instagrammable, but it's spending time in prayer and Bible reading. And it counts because it's God's word and God's word does not return void. It, it doesn't have to be us making it work by doing it right. Uh, we can, yep, praying while driving. That's perfect. Um, so finding those times where we are to pray continually, right? So that doesn't, that means we don't have to just have the one special morning time. It means we can do it anytime. And so this, uh, earlier this year, I did a program called Humble Habits. And the very first habit we did was a prayer habit where it was just one sentence prayer that we did, you know, attached to some everyday activity. Uh, some people did it while making their coffee or while washing their hands in the bathroom or doing their hair or makeup or whatever. And actually, um, what I found myself and what other people also said they found was that just stopping in the midst of the day was actually more centering, orienting, ourselves to what's true and real um, instead of being just constantly in the distraction mode of the daily details, having a stop point and even just a very small, very short breath and meditation on God's word and praying it back to him was so effective in helping us handle the rest of the day. So it doesn't have to be half an hour, an hour at a certain time in a certain place. Like those things can help and they're great when they work. But a lot of times for moms and how kids grow and change and a lot of times that's just not reasonable to expect. And we cannot let our expectations get in the way of doing um, of prayer and Bible reading Um Yeah. Okay. I'm getting distracted. Okay. Thanks. I was going to share the Christchurch uh, Bible reading plan. Um, they have a summer one that's coming up and I'm going to do the summer one. I missed out on this fall one that they did, um, but I'm going to do it next fall where it's through the Bible and they have pretty bookmarks. You can sign up and get weekly emails to help you remember um, to keep up with it. But, you know, you can listen to it on audio. There are different ways to do it. And it being a checklist and checking the box does not negate the value and the goodness. And it doesn't have to be long. And it, it doesn't have to be in a certain place at a certain time you know, to be effective. We can do that for habit building. But it's not like we're up a creek if it didn't happen. Like once you notice it didn't happen, like you can just do it. If we wait for the perfect, the prayer and the Bible reading will not happen. That's exactly right. Thank you, Alicia. And then the other thing that we need for spiritual rest is corporate worship on Sunday. So we need to be a part of the body of Christ and we need to be at church and we need to be worshiping God and participating in the sacraments and uh, sitting under the preaching of the word. And our culture today, even our Christian culture, really um, devalue, does, not, does not value corporate worship. But remember that the epistles were all written to churches. They were sermons delivered to churches. Every, the Christians were expected to be gathering and listening to God's word. And we are still expected to gather and listen to God's word. 
and worship together. So um, you're not a loner Christian. You can find a community of believers, I hope, um, and really prioritize that in your life because it, it can feel, especially if you have little kids, it doesn't feel restful a lot of the time, but we have to go on God's promises and um, God's ideas for how our weeks should be oriented and not our own and not our own feelings. Um, a lot of time, you know, when we had toddlers and I was in and out, like I did not hear a whole sermon <laughs> or participate in a whole worship service for years, <laughs> but we still went. And, and even that is just a statement of our family priority. And it's still saying, even though this doesn't seem to really make sense, um, I'm going to obey. And blessing comes to that, even if it's imperfect and messy and doesn't feel like it sh you think it should, just like the personal devotions, right? Um, it doesn't have to be a perfect church. It should be a Bible-believing church. You know, there are, there are certain um, issues that we should make sure are in place. But um, if we have our standards for our expectations of what we think it should be and feel like, then sometimes those are just temptations to not do what we're supposed to do. Um, yes, it's good for the, it's good for the toddlers, even though it doesn't look like it. And it's good for moms, even though it doesn't look like it. Um, that's where we go and we trust and rest. And finally, this is going to be a longer chat than I thought. Um, Finally, we have mental rest. And I think this is the category that we are least aware of, but that is actually tripping us up the most. Uh, I'm reading, I'm currently reading the book Deep Work by Cal Newport. And it, I wasn't even expecting it to tie into these ideas that I was having about rest and, you know, what we need to do and all that, but it does. So, um, when we are tempted to zone out, it's because we are overwhelmed, right? Um, we are overwhelmed by, uh, all the details, all the distractions, all the things going on in our life, all the, um, the people asking us questions all the time. And sometimes even we're asking ourselves questions all the time, like, cause we don't, we don't know what we're supposed to be doing. We don't know where the thing is. Like everything feels like a scramble. Am I right? <laughs> and sometimes it's not because you need physical rest and it's not because you need spiritual rest. Sometimes it's just because life is full of all these inputs and it's chaotic and overwhelming and we don't have we don't have what it takes to uh order it all, like to put it into order. It's all coming at us and it's all chaotic and messy and we don't know what to do. And then we feel worse because we don't know what to do with it all. And we just, it, it's just all coming at us. And it's like, all I can think to do is just turn it all off. The, and so I think if, if your feeling of I need rest comes out as turn it all off then this is where you need to really start brain dumping and applying and thinking. Um, you don't necessarily have to assume you have a spiritual problem. <laughs> like we have to make sure that that's in order first, but uh, it doesn't necessarily, you know, feeling like you just need to turn it all off. You just can't handle it anymore. It's, it's not necessarily a spiritual problem. It is some, it's partly uh, the way our current world is running with uh, the priority on distraction mode. And when we're in a distracted state, that is the opposite of peace. And we don't know how to get to peace. 
with if we are functioning completely in distracted mode all the time, we actually lose the ability to basically think in a straight line. And unless we can think in a straight line, like we aren't going to be able to problem solve. We aren't going to be able to, um, you know, provide the counseling and parenting that our children really need because we we're, it's so hard to pay attention. Uh, the connection. So distraction is like the opposite of attention and attentiveness is the ability to pay attention is sometimes what we actually are needing when we feel like we need rest. It's a feeling of, I need to turn off this distraction mode and have a time where I can actually have a complete thought and move forward with that complete thought. And so, um, so that's one reason why taking a walk helps. Yes. Walking in a straight line physically helps the brain feel more linear. That's perfect. Um, yes. Tired, eight kids, a puppy, a kitten. Yes, the feeling of being tugged in every direction. I think that we can all relate to that. And um, so in the book, Deep Work, Cal Newport is talking about how we need to set aside undistracted time and you know pretty much his only like the solution is just turn the internet off like how hard just do it <laughs> and have one project that you just work on and it's like well yeah <laughs> that'd be nice if I had an office door I could close and just turn off the internet connection and that would turn off all the distractions not <laughs> like the internet might provide another layer of distractions but we've got so many things coming at us all the time that you know you could take a step and do the easy things like uh, turning the notifications on your phone off that's a good one um, but we can find times like this even in a house full of children who need us all day and one of the things that we need to do is to realize that we have to and so when we feel we feel guilty if we feel like we just have to shut this all off because so we get we have all these distractions then we feel overwhelmed and we don't know what to do and the only solution we can think of is to turn it all off and we feel guilty for that because we know that's not what we should be doing we shouldn't just be like go away <laughs> so we get in this cycle then of just keeping going and it just gets worse until we crack. And the fact that we crack should show that something's out of whack here. Something's off kilter. And we do need to do something different. We need to find some times in our day where we are not being interrupted. It's healthy it's healthy for everyone it's healthy for our kids to not be constantly talking or interrupting or needing things uh, a lot of you know you see all kinds of articles lately today about how kids are never bored anymore and it's actually bad for them um we we live in a time where we have to be very intentional to guard our mental health, honestly. And we can do that by saying, no, this is just like everyone has to eat their vegetables. We have to have some time where we are not talking, asking questions, needing things. Like we have to build this intentional time into our day uh, for everyone's and not just for mom, not just so that I can handle you, but because this is good for all of us. Um, it's, it's not like you can demand a quiet time in a selfish way. And probably we all have. <laughs> and so then we feel guilty or bad because we did that with a, a wrong attitude and wrong motivation. You know, we did it in a grabby self-seeking way. 
And so then we be, we overreact the other way and say, well, because the way that I was needing a quiet time was wrong, therefore I must not need, you know, an, an afternoon without anyone talking to me. I've just got to go and get over it. You can actually figure out ways to have some quiet spaces intentionally, kindly, gracefully, you know, in non-selfish ways. So, um, you know, I've seen some people do this lately. Um, yes, a decision break. Exactly. Um, decision fatigue is super real. And it's not just our kids pestering that puts us over the edge. Uh, it's ourselves also. Our own minds are always going, going, going. And that's one reason why we're brain dumping, right? We're getting it out of our head so that our own head is not pestering us. So we have to find ways because I think that we also might find a way to arrange for the kids to give us you know, 30 minutes of not talking to us. And then we find that didn't help as much as I thought it would because a lot of the distraction mode is still here. Even if we turn the phone off, even if we send the kids away, then we find the problems still here. And brain dump, brain dump, brain dump. <laughs> and this is where organization can bring more peace. And a lot of the ways that, you know, you see organization on Pinterest or that kind of thing where it means um, label makers and matching containers and um, a perfect cleaning schedule where you take all the buckets out and wipe down the inside of the cabinet every month. <laughs> Uh, th that increases our feeling of obligation and our increases our feelings of inadequacy. Like that's just not going to work in my life. What do I do now? Cause I'm, you know, I'm incompetent on so many levels, <laughs> a box for every poppy pin. <laughs> um, but it's, it's the problem when, when this is the problem, when it's in our heads, it's one of three things. So this was, and this is, these are the last three points on my list that I was telling you about. We need peace from three things. So this is our own internal problems <laughs> that are giving us unrest. One is anxiety. Um, and I feel completely unable to really deeply address that one. Uh, Cause I know that so many people struggle with anxiety as like a real deep seated maybe even chemical issue. Um, but anxiety is going to steal your peace and steal your rest. It makes rest impossible. So we have to address it. We can't just live with it. We have to address it. And um, I don't think she's here right now. I know that um, um, you can find her on Instagram as redeeming homemaker. Um, she has, and I don't, I guess histories are hard on Instagram, but um, Isaiah 40 for anxiety, Philippians four, like anxiety is actually a sin and um, we need to repent and then we need to rejoice and we need to do it over and over again. So sometimes we think that because like, if we keep doing it, then I'm, I'm either off the hook or I'm a lost case, but it's like, it's just something that we have to keep doing. Uh, and then the peace of God is given to us when we pray with Thanksgiving. Thank you. Um, yeah. Nina at redeeming homemaking. I'm redeemed homemaking. Are you sure it's redeemed? Not redeeming. <laughs> um, she did some stories a while back, but I think that she has posts if you go back because she struggled with that and shared some resources um, that I don't have off the cuff right now. But I know she had resources if you struggle with um, anxiety. Um, but 
yeah, like actually repenting instead of just feeling bad. Sometimes just feeling bad is us letting ourselves off the hook, but actually calling it a sin, asking God to help us. And uh, Philippians 4 says, with gratitude. And that doesn't mean like, so I'm thankful for fluffy kittens and blue skies. It's like, be grateful in the situation that you're in, because you can always be thankful for Jesus, right? (laughs) Even if that's... (laughs) So be thankful, even within the situation where you're at, not for things outside your situation, but for inside your situation, prayer with thanksgiving, making your requests known, and then the peace of God that surpasses understanding. I was like, it's pretty clear verse and we can't keep coming back to it. That's why it's repent, rejoice, repeat. Like it's not a once and done thing. And now we're never going to have this problem again. It's going to keep being an ongoing problem. But every time it is, it's like, oh, I know what to do. And it's that knowing what to do that brings us rest. So it might not even, it's not even about an escape from it or solving it. It's knowing what to do. So that brings the peace. Well, I mean, God brings the peace. But um, that's a big part of it. Okay, but the two big ones, that one's like its own big, huge category. And then the two like everyday peace stealers and unrest creators are decision fatigue and the feeling of vague obligation. Like there are so many things that I should be doing. I don't even know what they all are. How many people have ever felt like that? (laughs) I have so many. Oh, I didn't even know she had this. Very good. Thank you, Trish. So click there, redeeming homemaking. Um, yes. So many things. I have so many things to do. I don't even know what they all are. (laughs) I see a lot of hand raising. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Vague obligation. So this is where like actual real life organization comes in where we can be where the organization is about our attitude and about an approach to life and not about necessarily having the most orderly closets or the corners that are free from gunk. (laughs) I had to tell myself that this week. Yeah. Um, I will not be taking vlogs of my home. Let's just say that, but, um, Real organization starts in our heads and it starts by knowing what those obligations are and making some of those decisions up front so that we can just do what we need to do. So one example, I'm going to try to, we're already over an hour (laughs) and I try to keep these way shorter than that. But um, so an example is our family's EHAP. So EHAP, it's one of those things. It's a part of Sweep and Smile. It's a part of the Simplified Organization course that means everything has a place. Sometimes everything doesn't have a place. That's why there's more decision fatigue because like, where do I put this thing? Giving things a home is one way we eliminate decision fatigue. So it's a project. It's something we do that's going to give us, it's going to have the payoff of rest after it's done. Then step back, step back to EHAP. EHAP is our time to put things back where they belong. And it has a time and it has a place every day. At our house, it's about five o'clock most evenings. Not every single evening, but most evenings at five o'clock is EHAP. That means at three o'clock when the house is a wreck and I feel like, oh, we got to do something about this now. Take a deep breath. And we don't have to do something about this now. We're going to do something about it at five. So right now I can let the kids be doing their thing and not interrupt them because I feel crazy. <sighs> like I'm the one that has to take a deep breath and say, we, we got this handled. It's okay. There's a time for everything and everything in its time. So everything in its home and everything in its time. That's when we can take that breath and know that the decision then has been made. It's not an immediate problem. It's not a vague problem. So we have to systematically work through our responsibilities and our obligations 
and our time and our home and in various ways put things in their home. And that is how we then build the mental rest in our own heads. And yes, we can then also build time where we aren't being interrupted and um, asked a million questions. But here's another thing to add to your brain dump, maybe throughout the ongoing, throughout the week, maybe write down the various kinds or maybe even specific questions your kids are asking. And maybe there are decisions that can be made up front. Like, are they asking questions because they really want to know what's happening because it's always up in the air? Like the more things are always up in the air, the more chatter there's going to be from the kids and from your own head. <laughs> but if breakfast, <laughs> if breakfast is always oatmeal, because <laughs> no one asks what's for breakfast. <laughs> uh, if <laughs> one of my favorites is if the kids ask what's for dinner, I say food. I don't have to think about it. I might have my menu planned, but sometimes, you know, like I don't right ask me at a certain time, I don't know, we're going to have something. Or sometimes a lot of times I'm just making something, it doesn't have a name. So then you're like thinking, food, we're going to have food. <laughs> it's just finding those little things that just turn off the um, stress response is what the distraction, the looking for an answer. Um, That is where we're going to start finding mental peace and clarity. So, um, yes, evening tidy it could have different names, but it helps so much. Um, <laughs> so finding, so maybe pay attention to the questions that you're asked this week and see if there's a common thread or if note which ones are most draining to you and is there a way that you can arrange the day or just have a pat answer that eliminates the stress that comes when the question comes sometimes these are really easy really simple if we look intentionally at it but when we get into distracted mode it takes work and intention to get out of it and that's that's where I am right now in the deep workbook. I'm in the rules section, but he's really developing how hard it is to move from distracted to thinking um, in a straight line again and how intentional we have to be and that it's really like a muscle that we have to grow. So if we've been in distracted mode for a really long time, it's not just, it's not going to be about just arranging a quiet time and then suddenly we'll be able to think deeply. It's going to take practice to, to exercise that kind of attention again. And it will be uncomfortable at first as well and difficult at first. But that ability to um, think through something without being distracted is where we'll start finding calm and clarity and resilience, which I think, you know, we don't just need physical rest, like selfishly for ourselves to feel better. What we need is resilience. We need internal calm and clarity so that when craziness happens outside of us with other people, you know, people are bumping into each other, bumping into us, we need to have a bubble. We need to have resilience, the ability to bounce back and to not just crumble or explode or whatever, you know, immediate reaction happens to be, you know, sometimes this is expressed as being proactive. You can't be proactive or resilient in a state of constant distraction. The two states are mutually exclusive. So it's a really important issue to address. And, uh, <laughs> now I don't, I, I, I can keep going. Um, but th this is why every summer I say that my, my project is going to be to clean and organize the whole house. 
because you know we've just finished a school year, we've wrapped up loose ends, but there are a lot of like the loose ends are still laying in the corners of the house and the bookshelves are cre- everything is kind of messy, not kind of messy, very messy. Um, yes. So the three things that we need peace from, the th- three things that are building distraction and unrest in our minds are anxiety, decision fatigue, and vague obligation. So um, so I always tell myself, well, I'm going to clean and organize the entire house this summer. And it never happens. But um, the steps, the strides that I do make during the summer help the following year because it's putting things in its place. And so cleaning and organizing the whole house as an unreasonable, unrealistic goal is kind of the catch-all like thing I tell myself that I'm going to do because any kind of order that I put things into, whether it's the home or a cleaning routine or getting back to like a better state of clean in the bathrooms, for example, um, ordering the calendar, putting my command center into order again, because it's become just a pile of papers. Any kind of order I can build is going to have payoff. Um, and really even just getting started and having one little corner that's, that's more orderly has a big um, payoff. <laughs> Because we can step back and enjoy it, right? Going back to the the kind of rest that God took, which was to step back and enjoy the work. Like it doesn't have to be all done before you can do that. And that is uh, being attentive to it. So, you know, make dinner when you sit down at the dinner table, look around the table, everyone together and the food on the table, even if it's from a box, even if it's takeout. It's dinner and you're all sitting around together and you have some food to eat. And this is something to be thankful for and to enjoy. And so enjoyment is a part of rest. Um, Making my bed never stuck as a habit until I started taking one second to look at it and enjoy it, like decide, choose to enjoy it instead of saying, well, I did it, but it doesn't matter. Um, Picking just one shelf and putting, restoring some order there. Don't just move on to the next thing immediately like a distracted state. Take a step back and enjoy it. Um, It helps a lot, especially like evening routine. It doesn't have to be perfect, but when you've, when you are done, step back and say, this is better. Or thank you, Lord, for this kitchen. And for the work that goes on here, that's building um, small little attentive moments that are going to build up and that help build that calm resilience instead of just going from one thing to another helter skelter crazy making. So um, find, find those um, moments and all of these things, um, a time budget, a, an EHAP routine, a command center, uh, these, these various uh, brain dump for sure. These are all parts of simplified organization, the e-course. And this summer we're going to be working through, uh, simplified organization live and all together. So if you are already, um, have, if you've already purchased simplified organization, even if it was five years ago, doesn't even matter how long it's been and whether or not you've worked through it before. um, It's a part of the membership. So it's not extra. It's um, a bonus for this summer. We're going to work through and build these pieces for the purpose of building rest into our lives, not for the purpose of making ourselves look better or of doing it because we feel this, the vague obligation, like we should be better, but so that we can serve better so that we can build our attentiveness and order in our homes to eliminate decision, fatigue, anxiety, vague obligation. That's really all of that is a 
is wrapped up in organizing our attitude and our mindset and our approach to life and our family. And that's what simplified organization is about. So you can click that green button that says use your summer vacation wisely to learn more about the live accountability 12 week. We're calling it an interval intensive. Um, and if, uh, if you aren't a part of simplified organization, as long, as long as you purchase by May 25th, then you can start with us. We're going to start May 25th. So yay. I know a lot of you that are here are already, uh, already in on the interval intensive and it's going to be a lot of fun no matter if you've worked through it before or if you haven't you're going to get something from it because it's just this kind of stuff that we have to work through over and over again it's not a once and done sort of thing <laughs> um, and yes even if i know the summer is a time where there are vacations and visitors and all kinds of other things going on but um what you're going to get during the 12 week interval intensive are uh, a weekly checklist that includes a bare minimum version. So it's not a whole lot of extra work. My goal is to keep it less than an hour for the whole week for the bare minimum version, and maybe even less than that. It kind of depends on the state of things currently, but that are just gonna give you those small pieces that have big payoffs. And um, you will be able to sign up for weekday texts and all the texts are going to be bits and pieces from the course. Um, so that, you know, you can kind of get those little reminders throughout. So even if, you know, even if other things are going on, even if it's swim lessons and all the different or errands or a park day, uh, getting those little texts that might be one of those reminders, like, oh, take a moment to be grateful and to remind myself of what's really important and to step out of that distracted state. That's kind of weird for a text. <laughs> and maybe it's giving you a notification to be an anti-distraction thing, but it could be. If you use it that way, it can be. It just takes intentional um, practice to use it that way. Yes, so um, if you're already members of Simplified Organization, uh, you should have received an invitation with a link to click to join. And if you didn't, send an email to support at simplifiedorganization.com and uh, Virginia Lee will help make sure that you're gonna get everything. So there'll be emails, uh, live video chats like this one, not this long, <laughs> more like half an hour uh, weekly to help us work through the material together you know, know that we aren't alone, know that we're all working in different ways um, to put these things into practice and to fulfill our duties and responsibilities with repenting, rejoicing, and repeating. So you can click that button to learn more about that. And uh, this was a lot of fun. So the replay will be he available here at this same link. There's, you can still use the share buttons too if you want to share this. And um, it, I think it just stays here for forever. So um, yeah, I look forward to working with a lot of you this summer for the Simplified Organization Interval Intensive. And um, I would love also to hear your feedback on these little bits of rest and different kinds of rest as you apply your brain dump. So I have a, um, I have a post called work to rest which is on this topic and if and you can go there and leave a comment um with an insight that you've had or maybe if you put this into practice i would love to hear about that and it would be really helpful for other people to 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 hear how other people are applying it so um you can go there to leave a comment uh yes the green button on crowdcast it says use your summer vacation wisely um, here, I'll put it in the chat box too. There you go. More of it. Maybe. <laughs> okay. So thank you everyone for joining.